Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a podcast that explores the world and the week ahead through the lens of astrology with a view to supporting you through life's crazy ups and downs and in making more confident decisions through each chapter. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for radio's The Bob and Sherry Show. And this episode is the weekly horoscope forecast looking at what awaits each and every zodiac sign on the wheel. This is for the week beginning May 6th, where it's a lot of moon movements and energy, which is one of those integration weeks, as I call them, with the biggest event being the new moon in Taurus, for which I have a workbook available for download. More about that later. I'll forecast using your sun sign as the first house point of the chart, and this is called the solar charting method. It works to give you the basis upon which everything is happening. But your reading can be further personalised through an individual analysis, and as I finish my last few booked readings this week, I was getting ready to open readings as of next week. However, those that were on the wait list got first choice, and I am back to being booked again. If you've emailed me, I will be emailing you back soon to give you a projected time for your reading. And if you are in need of a reading and you want to get on the list, reach out to me at thehoroscopevault at gmail.com and I'll be in touch ASAP to discuss your needs and get things rolling. And just a little bit of transparency, readings can take me anywhere from 8 to 18 hours per chart depending on how complex your astrology wheel and transits are. And I obviously don't work those 8 to 18 hours back to back consecutively. I do need to take a break in between so my brain doesn't melt. And it's that amount of time and that amount of detail that means I spend extra, extra long with each individual's outlook. And it's why I get books so fast and it's also why they take long to complete. Again, if you have any questions, direct them to the email mentioned and we can chat. So this week, Another integration week with the biggest pivotal point being the new moon in Taurus. And just a little recap on why this would be considered an integration week. You have nine planets in astrology, each moving at a different rate around the wheel. The sun takes a month to go through each sign, which totals 12 months, one year, to go around the entire wheel. The moon goes around the entire wheel in one month alone. Mercury's proximity to the sun means that it mimics the sun's pace. Despite being slightly quicker than any other planet, it still takes around 12 months to get around the wheel, thanks to going through three to four retrogrades per year. Venus, nice and small and speedy, takes 276 days to move through the entire 12 sign process of the zodiac. Mars's full transit through all signs is 685 days. Jupiter takes 12 to 13 years to go around the whole wheel, so that's roughly one year in each sign. Saturn's movement around the wheel, 29 and a half years. Uranus, 84 years. Neptune, 165-ish years. And Pluto, 248 years. So you can see the further out the planet, the longer its orbit gets, the longer it spends in each sign. So when you have transits and aspects happening with these big, far out, long, slow, dragging planetary moves, like any aspects really from Mars and Jupiter onwards, to the further out planets, then these are your powerful points of big topsy-turvy happenings. Like Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, where it opposed the sign of Cancer and kind of caved in the housing market. Another example of a big, long transit movement having a big impact, January of 2020, you had slow-moving Saturn and slow-moving Pluto meet up, which Obviously, the Rona emerged around that time. So these big planets equal big things and big times and big adjustments, equally so. The moon, however, taking just one month to make its way through all the signs, it ticks along, it makes its full orbit every like 27 to 28 point something days. As it does, it checks in with every planet, you know, in its slower pathway around the wheel. I'll sometimes call these stop checkpoints, and they're the moments where it's kind of just checking in on how things are going regarding the themes of the planet that it's shimmying up to. The moon's like, hey, uh, all good in here? Yes, no, maybe. It has a relationship. It brings out some themes. And then off it goes to the next one, like 
Santa each Christmas with an abundance of stops to make. So yes, this week is full of moon aspects. So there's some softness intended with these check-in points. The moon and its motherly touch offering not just support, but also hinting via the quality of the aspect at what you should or you could be doing under this portal, under this situation to feel more peace and comfort as life just continues to evolve and progress. Situations are way out of your control. Things are going to happen. You are just a passenger along for the ride. And if you heed the advice of the as above relationships, then your existence below down here on earth can be quite pleasant. So opening with the moon squaring Pluto, moving into a sun Saturn sextile aspect on Tuesday, it's the most hope filled energy of the week that's coming off of the past weekend's power boost. If you missed the previous week, the episode and want to catch up on that particular power boost, I'm going to link that for you below. But Monday, Tuesday is kind of a heightened focus on matters of duty. It's a shunt or a push into your obligations, your responsibilities, things that come with like specific timeframes or deadlines. And the bonus is these things coming up aren't necessarily a burden because you'll have the attention and intention to handle them, as in you'll want to do these things as opposed to putting them off. Or it's a case of having access to more discipline to work through something much easier now. You know how sometimes when you tackle something over and over again, it kind of just falls flat or you run out of steam. But if you wait for the right timing, then everything just progresses smoothly. Early in the week is an indication of some self-realization of something needing to be done. And it's also the inner okayness with actually stepping up and doing it. So anything you press forward with benefits from your efforts. And you can make some real respectable, steady progress towards goals through a methodical and focused approach. If you need support, it's more readily there. If you need advice, you just have to ask. It's also going to be there early this week. So things really begin with something to get your teeth into or to fixate on after maybe a time that's been less clear, a little bit confusing and lacking clarity, which is then perfect Moving into the Taurus new moon that arrives on Tuesday night for California and the West Coast, and it's Wednesday morning for the East Coast and, you know, most of Europe. The new moon in 18 degrees and one minute of the Earth sign Taurus is about narrowing down your focus. It's closing in your field of vision. It's keeping things on this visual and active straight and narrow path. It's about purposely blinkering out any distractions and Leaning on traditional astrology a little bit, the Taurus new moon is always going to be about abundance. Each year it happens, it promises something to do with the process of obtaining more security for your year ahead. And each time it gives you a hint as to how to do that through the specific theme of the degree that it's in. Last year's Taurus new moon was on May 19th at 28 degrees 25 minutes. And yes, it was about growing abundance but it was about doing so through limitations that teach you to find abundance in the small. It was about not forcing too much. It was about letting things come and go, flow in, flow out, having more, having less, and staying centered within that experience. So this year, still about abundance, the theme of fixation and the mentioned narrowed down focus is because there has been a lot of destabilizing stuff going on around you. And some unfair situations that you may be chomping at the bit to get out of, but you're so enmeshed within that you really can't see the way. It's almost like Monday's sun sextile Saturn aspect reveals something like here. This is what you need to do to focus on for now. This one thing, nothing more, nothing less, just this. For the new moon to then be all about fixating on that thing. And I've created a new moon workbook that's available to buy. It's just a couple dollars. It's an experiment to see if you can use these tools and experience what each kind of transit offers. This workbook guides you through the relevant affirmations of this new moon, including which area of your life it's showing up in based on your sun sign. So if you really want to start working with these cycles, it's a great alternative to a full reading, which are obviously still fully booked. And, you know, instead of going full deep into the new moon's impact on your personal chart, if you're looking for just a gentle way to start working with the patterns to see 
how astrology exercises can elevate your experience, this workbook is it. So a little bit of discipline goes a long way over the next six months with a goal starting now that shows sign of success by November 15th, 2024. And the new moon workbook also includes a reflective look at this cycle. So there's an exercise to work through in the future that relates to what begins now. The only real challenge for this new moon time is to be careful of troublesome relationships and boundaries will help you stay strong there. But there could be some individuals around you who appear to be off the tracks, derailed, going wild, just like off kilter. And it's like how when they say to stay still among chaos, like to not run away from a scary animal or not to antagonize it more, but to just stay still. And that scary animal might be a person or a situation you are just desperate to get away from. But for now, you'll need to focus on discipline first, thanks to whatever Monday and Tuesday reveals to you. And it's through this discipline that you get to move forward in the not so distant future. The link to download the workbook is in the show notes below. The rest of the week progresses with the moon in Taurus conjunct Jupiter in Taurus, which is a little bit lucky, before the moon switches into Gemini and makes a sextile to Mars in Aries, which is kind of very high octane, followed by the moon in Gemini still, sextiling Mercury in Aries, which is a lot of mental progress. And then the moon switches to Cancer, it makes a square to Mars, and a sextile to Uranus in Taurus, and then a sextile to Venus. And then the moon moves into Cancer, and makes a troubling square to Mars, and then a boosting sextile to Uranus and a rewarding sextile to Venus. So all of that jargon translated, this could show up as feeling some internalized hope. An elevated mood and a positive outlook may lead you to want to relax a little bit more. Maybe you have a party or an event to attend, and there's personal confidence where you don't need to and won't want to get involved in any confrontation or even standing up for yourself and it's not like this measly wimpy backing out of something and not standing up for yourself this is more like just rising above anything that's negative and staying on your positive train of thought and this is thanks to being able to see the path to independence more clearly you may not be as rocked by other people's dramatic expressions going on around you you're just the right amount busy enough with your own routine to not get dragged into other stuff and the Gemini moon with Mars and Mercury aspects might have you telling other people about the positive things that you are experiencing, which is where this week starts to get a little bit rocky as the moon switches to Cancer and it makes its only real challenging square aspect to Mars. This might be a sign of having said too much or saying things that you later regret sharing or doing things that you later regret doing. And it could be anything from going too hard at the gym and wishing you hadn't or eating wrong for how you know you should be eating, it could be taking a very affirmative action in accepting something and saying yes, where you wished you had declined and said no later on in the week. Or you have some excitement about what's coming up for you and you share the fun developments with others and then wind up wishing that you had told nobody anything at all. Towards the end of the week, work through stress and aggression with healthy and safe levels of exercise. Don't get too friendly. Don't tell people all of your business, especially family. Extra, extra, especially family. Discretion is essential at this time. And words are like this measure of inner certainty. And sometimes when you feel insecure and uneasy, that's when you talk or you say too much. Also be cautious to not argue. Or note when you're trying to quote unquote, sell something, like you're trying to talk someone into believing you or believing in you. Silence is a powerful tool this week. Don't respond habitually. There's some good news or a shocking event or a bolt out of the blue that comes kind of for your experience only, and it doesn't need to be shared. Sail onwards towards your amazing developments and simply let others witness it as it happens real time. And if you do slip up, and you do overshare where it's not appreciated, the criticism or the response you receive teaches you the value of boundaries. Don't take the haters personally. Rewind and go back to keeping your story to yourself, do what you need to do, and know that your authenticity is what attracts abundance. And to get into the levels of this abundance and challenge, each horoscope is timestamped below for your convenience. 
this week for Aries, some serious thought needs to be given to your career direction and you become strikingly aware of that. And it's not so challenging to confront. You don't mind putting thought into that area of life because it's kind of like tackling it head on now gets easier. So no more shying away from the inevitable change that needs to happen. As you start exploring alternative job options and getting ready to end your current position, you may find that your field of hope and options start showing up more and more. Like when you think of a yellow car, you see lots of yellow cars. Putting the effort into looking for the perfect career, you're going to see so many options. And if you're actually already happy and satisfied in your job, this might be more like receiving a promotion or an award or some kind of recognition for a recently job well done. The Taurus new moon supports a new direction in education. It may be the point of realizing that you've zoned out of something that you used to be really tuned into. And as much as this really does feel like a job or a work change where you learn something new to support it or you bring an old skill out of the closet to support it, it can also mean just a simple decision to start prioritizing and fulfilling your own needs in another way. So a commitment to quit anything that gives you anxiety and starting this almost six month cleanup plan being careful with your resources and getting some kind of strong strategy together for the future. The whole week is really about gaining spiritual and philosophical understanding of why things happen the way they do. And the place where you might have previously underestimated yourself, your talents, your abilities, your skills, your education, what you're capable of, this undervaluing of you can lessen. It gets a lot less as situations crop up as errands get done and opportunities start to show themselves and conversations happen that kind of support the realization that you are talented and you are capable and there are plenty of people impressed with how you move, behave and progress as an individual. This week could include having a heart to heart conversation with a relative, but remember to not overshare too much until the time is right. Self-interest takes precedence and it should be this way. If there's too much nostalgic living in the past, this can upset your weekend, going back and over and over again on issues that should just be left well alone. It's like you need to accept the past as it is and the present as it is and the future for what it could be without intermingling or merging any of those views. And if you want to get more from your horoscope reading, consider listening to the readings for your earth sign. And this is the sign opposite yours on the wheel. It's the sign earth was in the day you were born. Your earth sign is Libra and it gives you more material insights of the earthly happenings for the week and then there's the soul sign this is the sign three months before you were born it's said to be when your soul path developed it is used in human design astrology but hasn't yet become mainstream in regular astrology and is often why most of my readings have a little bit more to offer your soul sign is capricorn and listening to that is going to give you behind the scenes insights And then there is the most event aligned reading you can listen to. It's going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Taurus, travel and moving around more might be necessary. It might even be unavoidable. And this seems to be to do with favours or maybe just work. And while you seem pretty happy to do what you need to do, you might also be a bit hesitant or sceptical or in a slightly doubtful frame of mind. But the new moon in Taurus, it's in your sign. It's the true new beginning point for you. And whatever kind of slow paced, peaceful, low ebb, minimal, less is more motto that you've been living by, it's time to level up from that. Not necessarily switching into an active high gear, but just fixing on one solid goal, the most important next step that you need to make which might be to do with financial security, but not just that, it's also about being in the right place with the right people to have a positive experience and being sure to avoid the negative types. This being your fixation, finances, positivity and boundaries is healthy. It's healing to focus on finances and the values of the company you keep. And with the money thing being said, try not to get overstimulated regarding a financial goal To the point of wanting to extend your credit or ask for a loan, get new credit cards or make a quick speedy decision early in the week surrounding your money. Because by later this week, the dimensions of that specific need 
could change. So try wait out any financial action and maybe just make the plans. Because in making the plans, you might reveal some mental emotional baggage that needs to be excavated in order to move forward without bringing some of the heavy past with you, especially to do with any past habits or decision making processes that are financial in origin, impulsiveness or overspending or being too giving even. It's not that you just like luxury and you spend money. You may have also been the type to be too generous and that's bit you in the butt and it's not okay for the future at least not for right now. Putting your needs first is the only thing that you should be focusing on. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to your earth sign. Now the earth sign is the sign earth was in when you were born on it. This is used in human design astrology. Not a lot of people use it in regular astrology. It is an untapped gem. The earth sign is opposite yours on the wheel. So your earth sign is Scorpio. And listening to that horoscope is going to tell you a bit more of the earthly happenings. And then there's a reading for your soul sign. This is a sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. And this is going to tell you about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Aquarius. And then there is the most event aligned reading. And this is going to tell you more pinpointed what's going on. This is for your ascending sign, the rising sign in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Gemini, it might start out with a low energy vibe. But that's not something that's unwelcome. It might be a pleasant kind of quiet time, maybe a few days off of work as needed, or work is just going to be less intense. And the things that you electively put off right now are less of a risk for you to put off. It's okay for you to put these things off. It's just a time of getting extra rest and trying to enjoy doing so. The Taurus new moon might be a little fixation on healing. And part of the healing process is going to bring you face to face with the question, what are you doing in life and how does that make you feel? It's okay to question your satisfaction levels with things like your work and career skills that you use in your job. And try not to, in doing this, try not to compare yourself to others. If you admire somebody else's way of doing things, then simply use that as motivation. The Taurus New Moon is about fixating on healing things that feel painful to think about or experience in your life. And you may have one or two people who are particularly supportive to you throughout this. You might want to consider finding more people who are supportive. You could consider groups or organizations that have similar interests and ideas or groups that get together that offer information on how to do what you're trying to achieve. This includes newsletters and forums. And this could be also like a book club or a yoga group that's focused on internal development, attending classes with people who share your interests. And connecting more with like-minded others helps you feel an increased sense of belonging and it gives you not just hope for improving the things that don't feel satisfying, but it gives you the tools to do so and possibly even a direct opportunity to. You may be more sentimental, more emotional than usual. This can happen when you move through the healing process, no matter what it is you're healing. There's a little bit of detachment along the way and that's going to be letting go of things or people that you know are outright not good for you and someone from this not good for you group could go out of their way to try and change your mind about something this weekend they may try to use words and tactics to make you feel guilty for actions that you're taking and if this happens use this point to remind yourself that good friends true friends will never ever make you feel bad for putting yourself first To get more from this episode, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. And the earth sign is often used in human design astrology. It tells you about the earthly happenings and is a very untapped tool within the astrology world. Your earth sign is Sagittarius. And consider listening to the reading for your soul sign. This is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. And it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on behind the scenes. Your soul sign is Pisces. And then there is the most event aligned reading that you can get that's going to tell you more in detail of what you can expect this week. That's for your rising sign, aka the ascendant. And if you don't know what your astrological ascendant sign is, then use the calculator below in the show notes to find out. This week for Cancer, you get some real momentum going with your professional life. And this isn't a given. It's not something that just happens if you sit and wait for it. The sextile aspect in astrology usually means there is a necessary effort required. So with the sun sextile Saturn, which 
means you are represented by the sun. The sun is the identity. You need to consciously put in the effort with the effort being what Saturn represents. And this translates to using the knowledge that you already have at your disposal. And to be cautious of getting caught up in this cycle of needing to know or needing to learn more. Because think of knowledge as an ever-evolving landscape. So if you're there waiting until you've got everything all together in the most up-to-date version before you proceed with your actions, then you will never proceed. Information is always changing and growing. Therefore, check in with what you already know about what you want to do and how you can use that knowledge to progress the things and the goals that you have and then go with it. This is a really good time for making big leaps forward. And in doing so, you lay the foundation for something huge to grow. But you must take the steps and you must start the project or scale the project or step into the role or push forward the idea that you have. Whatever it is, you just got to do it. The Taurus new moon and its theme of fixation really supports you there. But it's a tough one because it does bring up the fear of the unknown. You may currently feel comfortable staying with the tried and true things that you're already within, even if that current tried and true situation is not giving you any desirable results. So really deep down, somehow you know that your fears are unwarranted. And this is just a kind of standoff with you against yourself. Getting over the fear of the unknown involves embracing uncertainty and focusing on what you can control. Try breaking down the unknown into smaller manageable parts and approach it with curiosity rather than apprehension. Look at gradually and slowly exposing yourself to new experiences, which builds resilience. Break your entire big scale goal down into maybe 10 or 20 steps or however many makes sense to you. And just spend this next week getting comfortable with step one. This will minimize stress, which can also be linked to intaking excess food or not having enough food for cancer zodiac signs. And food issues make you sicker than any other sign. So meal prepping prepping food ahead of time might help you make better decisions there. And with this kind of momentum going on, with healthy foods prepped and a big goal broken down into digestible steps, then the week flows a little bit more positively and you could feel a boost of confidence that you're trending in the right direction with your ambitions and actions. And then you begin to daydream, which is not a negative as long as you use it correctly. So if you maybe daydream on a cloud because you've achieved one thing and you feel good about that, As wonderful as celebration is, you might then lose the steam to continue. The dreamy daydreaming is for brainstorming. This is a fantastic week for brainstorming for you. So if you find it difficult to focus on the strategy side or something logical that you're supposed to be doing, switch over to the creative side and still capitalize on the energy in a professionally progressive way by doing the more creative and artsy stuff. Psychic sensitivity might be increased. Cancer is one of the most psychic signs on the wheel and towards the weekend you might find yourself inundated with information and sensory strikes don't feel pushed to make a decision or take an action on these things that you're picking up on in fact no impulsive decisions towards the end of the week are going to be good so if you know this in advance anytime that you go to do something you may be able to stop yourself and say that this doesn't need to be acted upon now the idea of pushing away the idea of pushing something away for a few days even though impulse tells you that it might be difficult or you might miss out that's not true. Just remember, no impulsive decisions at the weekend. And to get more from your horoscope, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign opposite yours on the wheel. It's used in human design astrology and underrated in regular traditional astrology. Your earth sign is Capricorn and listening to that horoscope will let you know more about the material developments in your week. And then there is the soul sign. It's the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. This tells you a lot about what's going on behind the scenes. And for you, the soul sign is Aries. And the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Leo is a good time to check in with your wellness. So if there's anything that you want to follow up regarding symptoms or sickness, this is the time to do it. And if it happens that this is nothing to do with any wellness worries, then it could show up in your work life. More responsibility with your job is not a stressful thing right now. You might actually be happy to add a little bit more to your plate in the name of growth or promotion or just more money and a better work-life experience. 
the Taurus new moon is an added fixation on something in your work realm. So there might be an issue that only you can fix. And it looks like this will take a good six months to rectify something that needs attention at work or again in your health. So a six month goal to improve your fitness or to climb up the ladder at work or to increase sales or to sell something altogether, whatever relevant work or wellness target that is for you, this is where you will fix your focus. As the week progresses, you'll find this invested time, energy and effort shows some pretty quick immediate results. And a boost of excitement makes you feel capable of anything, which is true. And so your mind may begin to wander to adventure and a little bit of nervousness comes about in asking yourself, what should you do next? This is you embarking on and moving into the unknown. And you're not scared. You may have a pretty solid idea of how to get to the next step. It's just making sure not to get sidetracked along the way, especially by other people's opinions. Which brings me to the most challenging aspect of your week. You may have to deal with someone who is fanatical about things being done a certain way. Someone who is so, so sure of their opinion that it rocks yours, or at the very least it pisses you off. It's somebody instilling worry in you that is their own projection of their own fear for the future. And it could be worth remembering that you don't need to take that on as your own. So this is a reminder that at the weekend, you might want to look out for people trying to impart their scared, fearful nature onto you and do not fall for that fear. To get more from your reading, consider listening to the horoscope for your earth sign. It's the sign opposite yours on the wheel and it lets you know more about the earthly happenings of your week. It's used commonly in human design and an untapped tool in traditional astrology and for you, your earth sign is Aquarius. And then there's a reading for your soul sign and this is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. It lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Taurus. And the most event aligned reading that you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant sign is, use the calculator in the show notes below to find out. This week for Virgo, your focus turns towards your investments in both finance and love relationship. And it's these elements of life that need more structure. So this is a good time for you to identify your intentions in either or both. So this means really nailing down what you do, but also what you don't want in relationships for the future. It's like having a solid list of non-negotiables. And this is important because without this list, you may never be truly satisfied or cared for the way you need and deserve. So this could be having a set of questions to ask anyone when getting newly involved in a relationship, or if you are in an existing relationship, it might be time for you both to discuss whether your needs are being fulfilled the way that you each individually require. This is a pleasant conversation if you do have it, and it's a pleasant revelation of a list if you decide to make it. The Taurus new moon fixation for you is getting and giving and experiencing the right exchange in relationships and the correct support. So it makes it look like this next six months are flourishing with very positive feelings, listening to other people intently, being listened to, having your needs and your words heard, and also experiencing a much better train of communication where it's necessary and needed in your life. And this could bring a moment of feeling lucky, grateful, and at peace. The rest of the week, you might get lost in things that you enjoy. You feel like positive progress is written in your story thanks to some exciting news that you receive or that is headed your way soon. You will have to work hard to fend off the more morbid thoughts. The darkness of the mind of Virgo is something that others don't really understand or perceive because you've got this perfect energy, this light energy, and everyone sees this first and foremost, and they're blinded by the light. But there is an intense, fiery depth to your mind. And sometimes it takes over and you work very, very hard to keep that in balance. And it's this depth of your mind that also helps you understand the not so savory motives of others. So it's not that you want to entirely switch it off. It's about determining a healthy balance. So later this week, a conversation may have you sinking into that more suspicious way of thinking and you settle into making decisions with your head and not your heart because you want things to make sense. You don't need everything to feel all fluffy and light. This could mean becoming overly worried about someone, another person. The end of the week shifts focus from yourself to someone else. And I don't want to sound insensitive, but you might need to find a way to shut this off. It is okay to help out a little bit. 
in a way that doesn't sacrifice your situation, but be cautious of getting too deep into someone else's bad or troubling situation because it's at that point that you then make their problems your problem and that's not needed. To get more from your reading, consider listening to the sign, your earth sign. It's the sign opposite yours on the wheel and it's used in human design astrology. It's not yet being commonly used in traditional astrology. It's an untapped source. And listening to your earth sign is going to tell you a little bit more about the earthly developments of your week. Your earth sign is Pisces. And then there is the soul sign. The soul sign is the sign that the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. This horoscope is going to tell you more about what's going on behind the scene. And your soul sign is Gemini. And then the most event aligned reading for you is going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what the ascendant is, use the calculator below in the show notes to find out. This week for Libra, it's about drawing strength from your individuality. Your family life has shifted and changed in its connection or its dynamic in this past six or so months. You may have given a lot of yourself to take care of someone, and this is a power moment when you can face responsibility with joy instead of fear. And you also get to be real with and proud of yourself that you've given the most you possibly could to someone who needed your help. The Taurus new moon fixation point sticks around the idea of your connection with others. And it's all about how you help people with their problems and maybe the idea of turning that into an income stream, if that's viable. If you are able to be a coach or an assistant or a mentor in something that you're incredibly knowledgeable about, or if you can somehow offer your services beyond the odd favor here and there. This really supports the idea of getting compensation back for all of the things that you do for others and all of the energy that you give out. The week progresses in matters to do with a partner, and this could be business or personal. It's a compromise, or it's some assistance needed, or it's just a good time to work out something that needs working out. This could be the details of a trip that you and somebody else are taking or talking about taking. This is lots of planning that takes your mind away from your usual habits of your day-to-day. But then as the weekend approaches, there could be an argument or disagreement or just some kind of tension with said partner. Again, business or personal. And whatever you were trying to compromise on seems like it's really difficult to come to an agreement over. This might be something to do with your career, the changes, the progress of it or the energy that it takes, taking you away from spending time with someone else and, and they don't like that. Or maybe just somehow your career is interfering with the more personal interactions in your life. And this causes you some worry, but it can be resolved by including someone else a little bit more on the decisions and plans that you make. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. And this is the sign that earth was in when you were born on it, when the sun was in your sign of Libra. It lets you know what's going on in the earthly realm. It's used commonly in human design astrology, but not so commonly in regular traditional astrology. Your earth sign is Aries. And then there is the soul sign. It's the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul path developed. Listening to this horoscope is going to let you know what's going on behind the scenes, the kind of driving forces. And your soul sign is Cancer. And then the most aligned reading that you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Scorpio, it seems like someone else wants you to take charge of a situation, but this is a situation that can't be helped and is probably just fine the way it is. Or it's a situation that you don't think even needs any adjustment. You are likely on good terms with the people that you want to be on good terms with. And there might be this idea that someone wants you to take care of their problems too. And maybe you do. Maybe you do that. Make sure to not get involved if it doesn't feel correct to. The Taurus new moon fixation point is about your relationships. And there are going to be those that you are happy to nourish. And then there are those that you're going to be happy to let go of. This next six months is fixation on the ones that matter and mean the most to you. And letting the ones that you could care less about. The ones that you don't care for, that don't bring value to you or love you the ones that feel empty and void, letting them fall away. The week progresses with some indulgence and extravagance, and this might be somebody else's indulgence and extravagance, which initially seems fine because you're very pro people taking care of themselves and treating themselves. But this may be something 
that leads you to dwell on some worries about finances, debts and taxes. If you end up perceiving someone else's spending or monetary habits to be troublesome in those areas, it could be that someone going over the top somehow has a knock on effect to you. And this is something that you don't want. The weekend challenge looks like some stomach upset and that's maybe a little bit of food poisoning or some kind of food tummy related issue. Or it could be stress at work that throws your stomach off. Or it could be catching a sickness that's doing the rounds. And because of this, you may want to avoid personal interactions with others so that you don't catch any kind of sickness in the air. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. And the earth sign is the sign opposite yours on the wheel when you were born. It's commonly used in human design astrology and very, very untapped in traditional astrology. Listening to your earth sign will let you know more of the earthly developments this week and your earth sign is Taurus. And then there is the soul sign. So the soul sign is the sign that the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul kind of switches on and chooses its life path, its life direction. Your soul sign is Leo. And listening to that horoscope is going to let you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then there's the most event aligned reading that you can listen to. It's going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator in the show notes below to find out. This week for Sagittarius, it's time to make financial plans, to look at your outgoings and your debts, and just overall tidy up your accounting. The need to be fully, truly, 100% independent is bigger now than it ever has been. And whatever or whoever you are becoming independent from is going to be a personal situation based on your experience. But as you go about your own business, you don't want to have to answer to anyone else and can absolutely experience that freedom with just a little bit of organized planning and strategy. Firstly, where it comes to how you spend money, of course, that's always going to help, but mostly with how you spend your time. The Taurus new moon and its fixation theme for you is health, wellness, hygiene, and all those kind of routines, but also taking back confidence in running those things your way and not the way that you've been told to or taught. This is about developing autonomy and shaking off the conditioning that has kind of been instilled in you, the conditioning that says you need to do these things that way and that you are here to solely serve others. Close the doors for six months and just serve yourself. And I get that this may feel initially quite uncomfortable, especially if you're used to being there for other people and being helpful, or let's say as it is, sometimes being the slave. So this week is really a cycle in time of moving forward, dedicating your energy and your resources to yourself and being fixated on self-indulgence and you do get to choose the quality of that indulgence so of course indulge in a shady way and you're going to get shady results if you indulge in an unhealthy way you get unhealthy results if you indulge in a positive way you'll get nothing but positive results but the main theme is putting yourself first as the week progresses you may be extra cautious about not overdoing things there's an urge to let your hair down and go wild, which is kind of difficult to temper because you kind of just want to have recreational fun. Try talking about these impulses, whether it's, you know, shopping or eating or whatever comes under your idea of recreational fun. Talk about these impulses with somebody you trust if you're finding it difficult to stay disciplined and still put yourself first as number one. The weekend challenge could look like some maybe arguments within the home or family, either other people sensing you pull away and they're trying to do anything in their power to try and gain control over you. The message is really that anything you do for anyone else, even if it's for family, is going to take away from the life that you're building for yourself. The other possibility here is that you underestimate yourself or others underestimate you. So the idea of not sharing any of your current plans is important here. Do what you need to do, speak in actions and not words. Show others your progress with the results that you work hard to create instead of sharing them verbally when these people can basically talk crap and underestimate you. To get more from your weekly reading, consider listening to your earth sign. And the earth sign is just the sign that planet earth was in on the astrology wheel. The day you were born, when the sun was in Sagittarius, and it tells you more about the earthly developments. Your earth sign is Gemini. 
And then there is the soul sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It kind of tells you about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Virgo. And then the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator in the show notes below to find out. This week for Capricorn, your life direction comes into focus and you experience something that sets you apart from others quite clearly. Rewards or awards or or a gift something that's directly to do with your talents or maybe even to do with your children if you have them and their talents it's a very affirmative moment to be proud of for a very long time forward whether it's you or children so you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor the taurus new moon fixation is either on your children's progress or your progress again and both of these things are amazing so if it's your project and it's your talents, this could be something to do with writing or boosting a creative venture more and more, something that you get some accolade for, and you now put in the effort to see it grow more over the next six months. You fixate on scaling a project or an investment into something very, very big, stable and supportive, maybe even something that brings you in some form of income. The week moving on is very daydreamy and pleasant, and if you can take time off, you should relax and enjoy your accomplishments thus far, although you might find that difficult and end up winding up being busy around the house, busy with family, more activity in your home, between your four walls, even if it's working on your project from home or a business idea. Do be sure to keep your mind on your health. Don't miss meals. Don't sacrifice your wellness needs because of being too busy. Make sure the things that you need to feel good still happen and be cautious of stress. A conversation in the home or between family could quickly escalate into something less harmonious than expected. It's a disagreement that could grow. And it seems to be one of those unavoidable matters that you just have to grin and bear it and white knuckle through. There's a term called grey rocking, where you give no emotional responses and you just reflect the things being said to you and don't absorb them, knowing that somebody else having their moment is pretty much nothing to do with you and yeah so this weekend you might be the object of somebody's projection and if you want to get more out of your weekly reading consider listening to the reading for your earth sign it's the sign earth was in when you were born on it it's commonly used in human design astrology not so commonly used in traditional astrology let's change that because it's super helpful If you want to listen to your earth sign, it's going to tell you more about the earthly developments this week. And so your earth sign is cancer. And in the same direction, there is the reading for your soul sign. Now, the soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul path officially developed. This is going to tell you about what's going on behind the scenes, like the driving forces in your week. And your soul sign is Libra. And the most event aligned reading that you can listen to is going to be your rising sign. This is also known as the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator in the show notes below to find out. This week for Aquarius, unfinished business seems to be all over the place. But you're not worried about it. You're becoming more stabilized and logical about your needs and your actions. So you can clean up a whole number of things that have been previously left undone. And the key here is to take care of stuff on your own, in isolation, in solitude, which probably appeals to you now anyway, especially if a recent revelation or a secret that came out leaves you needing to just process life and be in your own space. The Taurus new moon fixation point for you is about facing the reality to do with your home or family or a living situation. If your income or way of earning a living has changed, Maybe it's become difficult or it's just shifted somehow. You might fixate on making the most of your assets that you own if you have them. Or maybe this is the idea of moving home or moving location or, you know, how you may need to find employment someone else if you were to move. The next six months is a focus on your money and your home. And it's organizing these things in a way that suits the new developing version of you and the stability that you require. Changing where you live or moving home, changing your home life might prove difficult, yet it seems to be the main thing on your mind. 
The week moves on and a little bit of socialising lifts your worries away momentarily. This is more involvement with neighbours or friends or relatives that you enjoy being around and it can take your mind off of things or it's a good space for you to get some things off of your mind. You could express your feelings with people you love and trust who also love and trust you. And the challenge here is the most traditional one that we were speaking about. It's the idea of possibly oversharing. It's a conversation that is set to be an enjoyable moment of openness that turns into some kind of argument. And this is especially prominent if it's with a family member or if it's about your home life or home agreements. Maybe it's even with a landlord or a mortgage lender or something like that. So this is just a message to be extra selective with what you tell others. Because yes, while it feels good to get things off of your chest, these things may then be weaponized against you, which turns the tables completely. And to get more from your horoscope, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. And the earth sign is just the sign earth was in when you were born on it. It's opposite the sun sign. It's used commonly in human design astrology and is an untapped tool in traditional astrology. It's going to tell you more about the earthly developments this week and your earth sign is Leo. And then there's the reading for your soul sign. So the soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. This is said to be when your soul path is chosen and when it's developed. Listening to that horoscope is going to let you know what's going on behind the scenes, kind of what's driving your week. And your soul sign is Scorpio. And the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use a calculator in the show notes below to find out. This week for Pisces, everything just seems much more serious. Which could be good, it's like getting stuff together and making progress and feeling accomplished. Or it might feel boring, depending on where you are in your Pisces development. This is great energy for progressing professionally if that is a goal. But in general, it's all work and no play. So people that you're around may be boring. They may be informative and helpful, but still boring. The Taurus new moon brings you to a point of fixation on authority and authoritative communication. And now I don't know where this is going to show up for you. It seems like it's either going to be in family or work, but some words of instruction or somebody talking in a dominant way could be the vibe. And if it's somebody else being too domineering, then you may question yourself or vice versa. Someone else may say that you are being too rigid. If the goal is peace and mutual respect, then the choice of words matter, both yours and theirs. So the next six months, you may be extra cautious with how you speak to certain people because of a feeling that you need to tread carefully, or you may read in deeper to the things that people do or don't say to you. And this will let you absorb and intake data, and it may help you mend some broken bridges too. The week moves on and almost like an instant flow from the new moon, your relationships with others, especially superiors, seem to momentarily improve or your words are appreciated and you're thanked for your very valid, helpful input of something. And so with a pep in your step, you focus on cleaning up finances, maybe because you're still in that serious focus direction or maybe because you receive a bill that's a bit of a surprise. You start enjoying the process of budgeting and organizing finances, which could involve things like eating at home more, spending time at home with your family. And the key here is to enjoy it for what it offers, sentimental private time. Because if you look at it that way, it's just some downtime and it's a break. It's pleasant. But if you get carried away with the idea of having to or being forced to restrict, then you may get stressed or even angry and worried about finances limiting you and you may then have arguments with others about said finances and when that balances out the finances level out they always do the residue of the argument is left even when the stability returns so either way if the weekend is showing up as some downtime you may as well just go ahead and appreciate it and enjoy your peace don't let your peace be ruined by a momentary lull in money that you end up getting through within a week or so and letting it cause all kinds of disagreements and arguments in values. And to get more from your weekly reading, consider listening to the Earth sign reading. And this is going to be the sign Earth was in when you were born on it and the sun was in Pisces. 
your earth sign is Virgo and it's going to tell you more about the earthly developments this week. And then there's the reading for your soul sign. This is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. This is said to be the time frame that your soul path was chosen and it developed. And your soul sign is Sagittarius. It's going to let you know a bit about what's going on behind the scenes, driving your experience this week. And the most event aligned reading you can get is going to be your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator in the show notes below to find out. That's it for this week's episode. Stay tuned for next week's episode. I'm just looking at the aspects here. We've got the sun conjunct Uranus in Taurus, which seems like a lucky surprise, plus Venus in Taurus sextile Saturn in Pisces, which is some payoff from hard work already. That's a massive bonus. There's Mercury entering Taurus, which could be news about some resources in a beneficial way. Venus in Taurus conjunct Uranus also, a surprising gain. Sun conjunct Jupiter in Taurus, there just seems to be so many things going on next week. Make sure you are following the show. And until next time, bye. (laughs) 